Okay. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> hey, Peter. Peter. Stop calling me Peter. I prefer Otto Blix. We named the dog Otto Blix. And we named the show The Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek and pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring you the on industry guests to talk about the ever expanding geekiverse. We do our damnedest to be funny, but I guarantee you there will be funny tonight. I'm your host, Mike Kafis, driving the bus, and joining me this evening is my co host in somewhere in Podunk, somewhere over the mountains, is Otto Blix Bryant. On this episode, we're talking with our great friends, Scott Pond and Tori Duke of Scotori Entertainment and the Scotori Podcast. Welcome, guys. Howdy ho. Wow, thanks for confirm? inviting me to the show. Can I'm someone so, confirm that we're I'm live? So I'm pretty sure we're live. live. Yeah, we're live. Oh, we're yes. Good. We're good. Okay, I, folks, I'm juggling a chainsaw. I'm a one-armed man juggling a chainsaw, all right? So just bear with me. He's already lost a leg. <laughs> All right, so Scott Pond and Tori Duke are the powerhouse duo behind the Scotori podcast, where they talk about life and the current events, interview people from all walks of life, as well as review movies. I think that's what we're doing tonight. Movies, are games, we? books, no. music, and products. Scott is a multi-creative with experience in photography, art, and graphic design and visual communications. And uh, Tori has experience in publication and editing and marketing and social media. She's a guru, don't you know? And today, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, uh, we are actually going to be talking about a movie, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It happens to turn 30 this year and we are all excited to celebrate its birthday so i bring you first in peter hello hello yeah and yes. scott up, scott say hello hi diddly ho my friends <laughs> and tori say hello hello because I don't have a thing like Pete has where I can actually do buttons as I'm reading and, and switch things. I actually have to like look over here and do that and look over here and do that. That said, um, I really kind of just want to jump right into this. Um, so I have a bunch of stuff I'd like to talk about, uh, some, some really like house cleaning stuff to get out of the way uh, about this uh, movie. It was released May 24th, 1989, and... Um, and you guys, you uh, just stop me if you guys have anything you wanted to add about any of the things I'm getting ready to run down, okay? So, uh, so, be, so before you get going, how old were we all when it was released? Oh, oh, that's a good question. Scott, I mean, yeah, Scott, Scott, let's go with you. Yeah, Scott, go with you first. So 1989, I would have been 17 years old. And how old are you now-ish? Uh, your age, actually, 46. Ah, you're not my age. See, I just celebrated a, a birthday, and I'm 47 now. <gasps> so old man. I know, I am. I am old. But, so, all right, so you and I were, uh, seven, were we 17? Wow-ish. I might have been 18, I don't know. But I do, yeah, I was a little older when that one came out. So, uh, Peter, you would have been, if I recall. I was 19. Yeah. Graduated high school already, I, and that, that puts me at 49, if you all are counting and doing the maths properly. No. But you know what I really want to point out? I want to point out that Sean Connery looked old as crap in this movie, and now he's 30 years older than that. Uh, and the second thing I want to point Absolutely out... Absolutely shutter. <laughs> shutter, yes. <laughs> hey, hey, Scott, what... um. What what how what does the oh never mind uh, <laughs> I have a joke but we gotta get moving so um, no uh, next week we're gonna do Mike's birthday present so that that is something I also wanted to bring up because we're talking about birthdays and Mike just had his birthday and we normally do his birthday present on the show but uh, I didn't get him anything I know what I'm getting him but I didn't do it because I've been so busy with this project and traveling and all that good stuff that we're gonna do it next week. It's all right, buddy. Tori. Yeah. Tori. 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 Uh, us old men have just been babbling about. So why don't you uh, date yourself and tell us how old you were when the movie came out, or how old weren't you? I don't. I'm I'm gonna date you guys. Um, I was four. Oh, four, <laughs> four, like four D, four D. I don't understand. No, four years but, old. Uh, uh, forty year, four years old. Yeah. Huh. 
Well, you know what? That's okay. And and f- to tell to why don't you give everyone a little bit of a uh, background? Because if if there aren't any already Scottori fans that don't know some of your movie watching historical background, <laughs> that's that's the funny part because um, it'd be easier to tell you guys what I haven't seen than what I have seen. Oh, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, no, about the same. Right, you have seen than what you haven't seen. I, I, I haven't really seen much. Maybe in my whole life, sixty movies. Huh. And, and huh. you know what? But th- no, you know, don't don't get on her about that. You know what? She, we're not even going to get into how, why, or why that happened. It's it's a travesty. We're moving on. She is making up for lost time. What a train wreck. <laughs> well, the, the sad part is that like twenty of those was in the past two years. So. That, wow, that, that's good. So, all right, uh, uh, real quick. Well, uh, there I am. Real quick. What is, what is your favorite movie? Yeah, from a person out of the sixty of that you've movies. seen. Yeah, yeah, the sixty that I've seen. Um, I, I don't really do well at picking favorites, but I like anything Nick Cage, Johnny Depp, or by Tim Burton. So. Hmm. Edward and, and 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 you didn't like the Matrix, from what I understand, didn't you? No, I, okay, I, well, I didn't get it. I guess. Well, that goes your screen time, anyway. Scott, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like Matrix or Fight Club, and I was just like, boo hoo. <laughs> yeah, that oh, is. Yeah. This, when you guys picked this movie, I was like, oh great. Um, I just watched the first Indiana Jones movie. What Scott? Three weeks ago. That is a true statement. And For the first much- time ever. <laughs> And how much do you remember of that movie? Uh, there were snakes and a pit. <laughs> <laughs> boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> Why did well, it have to be snakes? Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Let me let me just run down real quick. Uh, it starred, came out May, uh, May 24th, 1989. I, I guess I had just turned 17. Uh, or you know, I, maybe I just turned 18 then, Scott, if you were 17. So, yeah. uh, Harrison Ford played Walton, uh, Henry Walton Jones, Jr. Um, no, yeah, uh, uh, Jr. God darn it. Henry Walton Jones, Jr., or Indiana. Sean Connery played Henry Walton Jones, Sr. Uh, Jillian Glover played uh, Walter, Julian, I'm sorry, Julian Glover played Walter Donovan. Uh, Denholm Elliott, who played Marcus Brody, um, who is the, the goofball. Um, well, he, you know, he's kind of the, not, not a, not a foil, but he's definitely the goofball of the, um, it's comedy, like, re- comedy relief. Yes. Thank the you. Do- the doddering old fool. Yeah. There you go. Um, Allison duty. <laughs> duty. <laughs> duty. I know. I saw that. I was like, she oh, played duty. Elsa. She played Elsa. Yeah. And, um, John Rias Davies. <laughs> he played Sala. Ha ha. Hindi. And oh. Michael Byrne, play, I think I pronounced it right. Is it Byrne? We're not doing right? the whole. We're not doing the whole cast, I, are we? Two more, two more. General Vogel. <laughs> no, I mean, but, and and I had to put this one in. Do you know Robert Edison? Do you know who he played? Does anyone? 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 Robert Edison. He Peter. He played. He played the Grail Knight, who said. Okay. Who? What did he say? You chose poorly. Oh, it's my favorite. It's like the best <laughs> line from any movie. I swear to God. You're, you're, missing the, you're missing one of the most important people who played a role in that movie. Who? River Phoenix, who played young Indy. That's was really important. Don't oh, forget I, I that. Didn't, the list was getting long, and I didn't want to get yelled at for the, it. So the late River Phoenix. <laughs> yes, the late. Very late. He, he died like three or four years later, as a matter of fact. Poor guy. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. All right. So... Uh, what what else, so guys? Are those people really um, famous besides Harrison Ford? <laughs> River Phoenix uh, was famous. River Phoenix. John Reese Davies, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Sean so, Connery. So well, so yeah. so it's funny because this was actually discussion earlier, in that for the three of us, Pete, Mike, and myself, most of those actors have extreme nostalgia value okay. for all of us. Yes, right. Yeah. Connery, obviously, in Bond. Mm-hmm. Um, for myself, also, as um, let me get get it right. Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez. Oh yes, Highlander. Highlander. Yep. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Julian Glover. 
which yeah. most people today would recognize him as Grand Maester Pycelle from Game of Thrones. Right. Oh but I my first God, saw him, you're right. Yeah. I first saw him as um, Scaroth from Doctor Who in oh, the okay. City of Death, I believe, episode. Huh. And then obviously John, John Rice Davis from um, Shogun fame and Sliders fame. So for us, Sliders, yes. Huge nostalgia value for all of these actors. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Pete, like do you have any, like, do you have any oh, way to, met, do you, Pete, do you have any way to monitor the chat room? I'm, I'm monitoring it right now. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. Make it. And I was going to say, for, for me, you know, River Phoenix was about my age, right? Mm. So. And he was an up-and-coming star, big rising star, and he had just done a couple, you know, he'd, he'd been in a couple big movies. I mean, he was really becoming big. And mm-hmm. um, this was really cool seeing him as young Indiana Jones. And then, and then when he passed away a couple years later, it was just like, what the fuck? That's awful. You know, because, like, this, this young – he was one of the first, like, young actors to die to drugs like that. You know, it was, just, mm-hmm. it was, very, vi- it was very visible because uh, he died, like, right out on the street in front of the Viper Club. It was, yeah. it was pretty – pretty crazy but it's just funny because tori's like river what i mean he's, i know joaquin but well, yeah he's, yeah, he's joaquin's brother right. like joaquin right. was nobody then yeah. and then he's and now he's know. joker yes uh, now he's evidently joker. so um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I just i just wanted to make a make mention of um this film's locations even uh it, mostly in America and in England uh, were, were the two places that it was filmed. Utah and Colorado and California. Um, mm-hmm. And then it was filmed in Italy, obviously. And uh, then Jordan, Spain. Um, Buckinghamshire, Hertfordshire, Essex, and London. No, At no point were they ever, actually ever in um, any of the uh, in actual Germany proper, which I thought was interesting. Mm-hmm. And that, that and that's that um the the city now that that where they're going through the wall like that cut out the wall the the building that's cut out of the wall that's mm-hmm. actually a place yeah uh, I think it's in I forget where it's in so I is that is that Iraq I've seen I can't it remember before, but I can't remember where it was I, I, I think it's the it city of there. Messina or something like that but anyway it's it's a uh it's an actual place in the desert in one of the the uh, middle in the Middle East somewhere uh, and, uh it's in Israel. They must have was it? It's is it in the Israel? Pet, Petra is at uh, well, I gotta read is that this. Okay. Wadi Musa, a three-hour drive or bus ride from the Jordanian capital of um, Amiyan. But they didn't Amman. even they didn't even use that at all. Even just like for just outside long shots or anything, yeah. right? They they just never went there. Right. That's interesting. Okay. No, I think they they I think they were there. It was around that in that area, Jordan, Jordan. Okay, I, I, yeah. I didn't know if it was in your credits there. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on. We're going to talk about what this movie meant to each of us, okay? Uh, what, given a description about sort of what to you what this movie was about, uh, if you were going to be the announcer or a guy or whatever, but also giving a, a personal um, take on kind of how, what you perceive or how you kind of, what the movie essentially meant to you um we're gonna who wants to go first i'm going last so who wants to go first somebody's going first come on who who all right scott yeah sure i'll go first um so so i actually wrote up a little small paragraph good which i can recite for you right now uh indiana jones and the last crusade is a nostalgic action adventure movie in the same vein as the serialized radio dramas of the early 1900s it's focused on a dashing hero, an intractable foe, a damsel in distress, and a lovable but estranged father figure set it apart from all the other films in the time period. Our dashing hero is an average Joe who has honed some of his skills, namely history, pop problem solving, and physicality, just enough to step into the shoes of the adventurer when needed in order to overcome obstacles. All in all, it's a nostalgic piece one focusing on bridging the gaps and hurts of our youth and reconnecting with what we love about our youth, our cherished memories, and ultimately ourselves. Very good. Who even follows that? Uh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
Now, you, you don't have to be an overachiever like Scott. You can just speak from your heart. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, so, for me, this movie, I don't know. Um, I, I like you guys, so I watched the movie. What and... would you tell your English teacher it was about? This guy that has some weird, odd, strange look magically survives all of this stuff in the search for a cup of water, and <laughs> he saves his dad, and then they like sh run off into the sunset. I cannot say that you're wrong. Sure. I cannot deny that. You are absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Petra. All right. So I I did not do my homework. I did not write anything. Uh, I, I, like I said, I've been very busy. Um, but I will say, uh, I can I can absolutely speak to this movie. It is a it, it's a throwback to the pulp era, uh, the radio dramas, the the old forties um, shorts, the the pulp shorts, uh, things like the shadow, the spider, uh, stories such as that. Um, and it's you know it's the continuing story of our of our of our hero, Indiana Jones, who like Tori said, is magically lucky. Like he is a superhero and his power is luck. You know, he is, he is yeah. like um, a domino, you know, he's like mm -hmm. a male version of domino uh, because just like you're, you're, when he's on that tank, right. And he's getting ready to get smashed into a wall and a bullet goes off, shoots the driver and the driver turns away from the wall at the last second. So he doesn't die straight up magic luck. Um, who pulled the trigger? That's awesome. Yeah, but it's it's also what's really also awesome about it is is that even though he is the hero, he is sort of he's, he's still the underdog. He's not this hero who can do no wrong. As a matter of fact, he stumbles through most of his adventures and he gets lucky. But he's not he's not just lucky. He's smart, so he uses his brain to figure out problems and get out of get out of situations. Um, and he uses daring to get into situations. Uh, and he uses his heart to do the right thing. He's always doing the right thing. You never, you notice that you never see an Indiana Jones do the wrong thing, even when he wants to. The look will be on his face like he does not want to do this, but he goes and he does it. Um, so, so that was really uh, a, what this movie was to me, and the fact that I feel like they did the first movie, which was a slam dunk, and then the second movie, which I like, but I understand why people don't like as much. And wasn't and it wasn't as good as the first or the third. This was a throwback. This was going back to the first again and going back yeah. to that formula. And then the fourth never happened. I know people talk about that rumor. There's a rumor that the, there was a fourth movie. Mm, no, but I know it, it. It didn't happen. Nope. So this nope, was nope, the, nope, the nope. this was a really good one and the last Indiana Jones movie ever made, which is awesome. Do you guys know which of these movies uh, uh, in the uh, I call it the Indieverse timeline. Do you know which of them came first, second, uh, third, and then never happened? <laughs> no? It was actually Temple of Doom on the timeline it was 1935. Raiders of the Lost Ark was 1936, and 1938 was The Last Crusade, and then followed by something happening in 1957 that imploded in and of itself, and then we never knew what happened. So Wait a minute, um, so Temple of Doom was a prequel? Mm-hmm. I didn't know yeah. that. Oh, yeah, my God, yeah. I learned something. Yeah. So, um, okay, so uh, let me juggle another chainsaw. Let me get, get into what I, what I think it was. Uh, everything that uh, – <laughs> everything that Scott read uh, and also what Pete read. Um, and uh, it also, on, on top of all that, is there's a separate layer and a very thick layer of a story about a, um, a father and son who are somewhat estranged uh, and it um, is a very reckoning and a very reconciliation, uh, reconciliationary uh, movie um, about that and um, it, it was very interesting because they shared a very common interest however there are so many times when you could see where um, both of them like couldn't were just like at odds and just couldn't understand the, one another until as we're going through the movie and things unfold um, in, in, in the different acts uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that in each act but uh, definitely I think it is definitely a father and son type of um, kind of reconciliation coming coming of age type not coming of age but a reconciliation film so I thought the dad was annoying 
You thought well, the dad was annoying. Well, total oh, diss on Sean Connery. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> not not necessarily Sean Connery, but um, just, the role. I, I, what his character was like? Oh, go well, away. Yeah, it, 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 it did. He, he, he was. He was kind of like. Uh, it's like an old short round. Kind of a. No, oh no, it. nothing's that bad. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of what he is. Dr. Jones! Like when he sits, he's like, he's like, I find that when I just think about something and he sits down in the chair and the, and the, and the, the thing opens up so they can go down. It's like, that's what Short Round did. He leaned up against a thing which set the room in motion, right? Well, there's definitely part of that, um, that luck. There was the, the luck factor. He definitely was involved in that, in, in making that happen. But uh, quick, quick question, each of you, and I'm going to start first. Uh, mm-hmm. The question is, does this movie hold up? I say yes, it does hold up. Yes, um, I agree. And, and part of the reason I think has to do with what Pete said is that uh, it, there's that pulp era. It's the movie itself is actually a remake of many other movies that were made in the you know twenties thir- in the in the twenties and thirties that that pulp era. So I think they did a, such a good job. Um, Spielberg really did a, such a good job uh, capturing that in a bottle that I think that um, it it just transcends time. In, in many ways. So, uh, Tori, does it hold up? I think it does. I mean, I think the, I mean, as far as the story, it holds up. Okay. Um, as far as the graphics and stuff like that, it does. I mean, yeah, of course it's like every movie. It has a couple things here and there where you're like, oh, okay, that was definitely made in a studio, not outside, but I thought it did. Mm. Okay. And Scott, yeah, I think it's for the for the for the reasons you you mentioned as well. Number one, it wasn't a modern representation of what was happening at the time that the movie came out, so it had the benefit of already being almost a historic piece. So mm-hmm. you, you've got a good representation of what was happening at the time, or could have happened at the time. Um, the other piece of it too is that because they didn't fall into the trap that a lot of the shows and shorts and movies in the 30s and 40s fell into of making cardboard cutout characters. They mm-hmm. actually gave these characters more dimension than your typical average treasure hunter would have. That helps it hold up a lot better too. And the fact that the situations really weren't that outlandish, which forced you rely heavily on special effects, also grounds it and makes it more relatable and makes it hold up a lot better today. And name, name one treasure hunting movie that wasn't good. National Treasure. King Solomon's like, Mines. Thought, oh, King Solomon's Mines bad. I thought National Treasure was okay. Yeah, I, 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 it's not because great. I'm a sucker great. for it. I'm a sucker for all this. And, and even, um, what do you call it? Uh, Dan Brown books, Sol- you know what I mean? King Solomon's Mine was horrible. Horrible. All right, so Peter. Uh, Perils of Gwendolyn. Perils of Gwendolyn. You ever see that B movie? If you've never seen it, you owe it to yourself to see Perils of Gwendolyn. No, I do Just not trust me. I don't take a, B movie Flash recommendations. Gordon-esque. No. <laughs> No. Yes. It's like the Flash Gordon of Indiana Jones. It's awesome. Boobs everywhere. It's full of boobs. <laughs> oh, one so, character... oh, so, so it was Flesh Gordon of Indiana it's Jones. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. So, uh, so my... Pete <laughs> says it holds up. And moving on... Um, <laughs> Let's let, we're gonna let's just kind of jump in. Um, and uh, Scott, unless you had um, anything else you wanted to to kind of talk about, I I just thought we could get into sort of the first act, kind of just do a little sh- spiel and then jump into the second act and the third act. We don't have to hit every single, you know, um, scene. But um, what do you? Uh, yeah, no, the the only thing I found interesting, I, I I did a little bit of research and digging on this, aside from having seen it probably a dozen times myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, What I found was interesting is that originally George Lucas wanted the third Indiana Jones movie to be a haunted castle movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did read that. And because, because Spielberg had just finished Poltergeist, he didn't want to do another damn ghost story. Right. So then, then Lucas suggested, well, why don't we do a story around the Holy Grail? And Spielberg didn't think the idea was very strong because he wanted a father son story. So they basically merged those two ideas, and that's how we ended up with the, with the Last Crusade. Yeah, Neat. some other m- movie lore. Uh, interestingly, Spielberg missed out on a few other movies that he could have directed because they were worked on the screenplay and had so many rewrites of this thing for so so long, like literally four or five years in the making, that he missed out on making a few movies. 
but he was very committed. Mm. He actually made like a it was like a promise. It was a commitment to it. So, yeah. Wow. You Neat. go, boy. <laughs> Neat. All right. Uh, so who uh, who wants to start off uh, on our uh, journey into the first act into our young indie our our um, item which I think uh, you know was nailed by um, River Phoenix. River Phoenix. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think so. Uh, who wants to get into that sort of uh, you know? I think Pete does. <laughs> I have some notes. No, I do. I have some notes. So, Good. okay. So. We've already talked about River Phoenix. That was an awesome casting. I like that. Um, but what was super interesting, and I'd forgotten about this until I watched it again, River Phoenix goes up against a guy who looks like Indiana Jones, and he basically yeah. models himself after that guy, which I thought was really cool because young, impressionable people will model themselves after a cooler person, and that guy was actually really cool, and he wasn't like – he actually wasn't like a dick to the kid. Like he wasn't, he wasn't a dick. And he's like, he's like, Hey kid, yeah. you lost this time, but you won't always lose. And then he gave him the hat to so his hat. I don't know if that's the same hat, but it was, yeah. it is the same model. Like so he gave that kid the hat. He had the same, had the same jacket, the same, like, like scruff, everything. I thought that was really cool. Total well, mean Joe fact, Green, the mean good Joe Green moment. <laughs> and, and the fact that Fedora dude mm -hmm. was the polar opposite of his father. Mm -hmm. Just just amplified that even more because mm -hmm. obviously, obviously living under a man who was so strict and so demanding and then seeing what history could be like and history seeking could be like, it's 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 the golden ticket for him as far as what he wanted to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think one of my favorite quotes from the first part is when he's coming out of the cave after he's got the cross thing and he's like, everybody's lost but me. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, he's lost okay, me. sure. Yeah. That's yep. how that works. Yes, yes. Uh, I I thought uh, we got our first view of the relationship. I guess I kind of uh, am the one who's going to be sticking to the. Uh, that's fine. Sticking to the relationship aspect of this, uh, the father son part, and we get our first when he when he's running into the house, all you know, hot and and um, heavy over what's been going on. Um, we get our first view or our first insight as to what their relationship is like when, you know, all he wants is attention and his father's just completely enmeshed into this, not even lifting his head as he's looking and saying, count to 10 or 20 or whatever it was. Nope, nope, nope. In uh, whatever it was. Was it in, uh, in, Greek. in Greek? In Greek. Yeah. In Greek. You know, and yes. by the time he's just like, oh, Jesus, I don't have time for this. <laughs> and, right. and then the, the kid trumpeted and then the... It was just, it was so interesting um, to see that. It was just like, okay, so this was an early, you know, we, early on we're, we're getting some, um, some ideas about what, uh, what that's all about. Oh, did you know that kid, the, 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 I want to say, you know, he's a the heavier kid with the bugle and he was in it with the cave. You know what his name was? Herman. Ah, Herman, you're right. You watch the, see, I always do that too. I watch the movies with the, um, with the, uh, um, Subtitles. Subtitles on, yeah, so that yeah. I can uh, see the names of people. So good. Wish you could get subtitles for your brain. It would be so awesome. Oh God, no, you wouldn't. If you saw, <laughs> if you saw subtitles in my brain, no, it would just, just like be, when you're talking, it would be dot 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 to say dot 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 dot. Hey, so we also get to see where we get to see where his fear of snakes comes from, which was cool. We yep. get to see where the whip came from, like the whole yeah. idea of the whip, and where his scar, where he got his scar from. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So that was and, and his ability to always, his ability that that he is uh, definitely um, gifted to get out of a jam, um, yeah. definitely with that lion and everything, and and how uh, even in danger, like he like he has to capitulate to get saved by the very people that he's trying to get away from are going to save him, and it was like I guess I have to do this. So they pulled him up from the lion's you know train car. Yeah. And it's the whole the whole history of Indy always picking the wrong friends because you remember in the first movie when he comes out of the he comes rolling out of the thing after the boulders hit the thing and he's like he's like ah Doctor Jones Jacques it says so yeah. Doctor Jones you you've made the wrong friends and the same <laughs> thing happens to him like when you know well what had happened to him before when he was a kid the guy comes in and that guy had made friends with the sheriff and all that and yeah. it's like oh man wrong friends so that was kind of cool yeah yeah very good what I found was what what I found was interesting. And you see this with a lot of movies that are, are follow-on movies. Um, specifically, if you take, and this movie doesn't exist for me, so I'm just kind of <laughs> guessing what's in this movie. 
but the third prequel Star Wars movie. Take that as an example. They tried to cram so much um, hooks in for what happens in 4, 5, and 6 into that one movie that it just became a parody of itself. Uh, this one, even though they crammed a lot of stuff into that young Indiana Jones sequence, mm-hmm. the, the discovery of the whip, the, the phobia of the snakes, snakes being developed, uh, the outfit, the fact that he wants to be a treasure hunter, but a good treasure hunter that saves artifacts. Mm-hmm. All those things seem to happen within a two-hour period of time, and that defines pretty much 90% of who he is in, as, as an adult. In any other movie franchise, you'd look at it and say, that's garbage. What the hell did they just do? But it seems to work in this series. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, I can see that formidable period in his life being a huge trigger for what he actually becomes based on what he actually already was, which was a combination of his father and a rebellion against his father at the same time. Mm-hmm. Very good. Yes. I think it was because they, it's the way they wrote it in. It was that it became seamless as part of the story. Whereas in say, for example, solo and I liked Solo. I actually liked solo, but some of the, the, the hard fits that they put in there, they just, they basically just hammered it in. Like here's this thing, bing, and here's this thing, bing. Right. But with this just kind of flowed in, it just, it's a difference between good writing and poor writing. Right? Yep. Yeah, much like Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, after we get to the modern day, we're back in 1938 now. Um, we see him at the, <clears throat> teaching his class. <clears throat> Gosh, we see him teaching his class. Uh, and I thought I wanted to point out something the, that was interesting. I noticed the, the hypocrisy that he liked to preach to his students that there were no lost cities, no exotic travel, no maps to bury treasure and X never marks the spot. Mark a spot. Yeah. <laughs> but so, when they come back to that, it's so yeah. awesome. Yep. Cause he's like, huh, X marks a spot. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, it's like, uh-huh. yeah, Pete, it, it's like they wrote that. It's like they wrote it in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Almost something called <laughs> foreshadowing or something. I don't know. Oh, like a that. lot of foreshadowing in this movie. I mean, yeah. Right. I mean, oh, pictures God. on the walls and things like that. I mean, how funny is it? He goes to Berlin to get a book and they're burning books, mm-hmm. right? The whole reason he's there is for a book and they're burning books. That just, all right. That has never occurred to me to the second time I was watching it. Or the fact that he's there and who is the one person he meets that he really doesn't want to meet? <laughs> yes. Right. Who signs, who signs the See? book? The book. Yeah. <laughs> now, I got to tell you. As as as, as a, well, not as a younger kid that I thought I was. Thanks, Scott. Um, but uh, just watching, I was like, I, I didn't know where that was going to go. You know what I mean? In my mind, it was like it's it's over. Or he's getting caught, or something's happening. And that book's getting taken away. And when he signed it, it was it it really paid off all of some of what I was starting to feel now, and I think even then some of the slapsticky or kind of Tom Fullery ish things that were going on. But to me, that was like a more high-level type of humor um, that I, I enjoyed. So I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, David Benavides said that I, – I I'm sorry, we're jumping ahead to the Nazi thing. But David Benavides had said, because it's all the way back here, and I don't want to miss it before we forget, okay. that uh, the interwebs say that those were actual Nazi uniforms, that they had found a cachet of them left over. They were not obtained by a costume. They weren't like costumes. They were actual uniforms. Of course, that, he says that's as per the interweb, so who knows. Oh, well, that's creepy. I don't like that. Yeah, no. Dave. <laughs> Dave, you win the uh, fun fact award so far today. Right. Yep. Yay! Yay! Go, Dave. <laughs> so, uh, do we want to talk anything else uh, before we get into like him meeting Walter Donovan and basically knowing that he's going to have to go on this this trek or move on? How do we want to move thing, on? The the only the only thing I want to say is is there was something that Marcus says here in the first act that kind of encapsulates the whole backstory and feeling of Indiana Jones. And he says, the search for the grail is the search for the divine in all of us. If you spin that, Indiana Jones is about testing your humanity and humility and coming out as a true human in the end. Yep, very good. I actually forgot that I did make make that note that Marcus gets uh, pretty esoteric about talking about the search for the... Uh, the search for the soul is the search for the divine in all of us. Yep. Uh, awesome. Um, 
Let's see. Very humanistic thing. Oh, another another uh, father son thing that I I noticed is, and I think it was a turning point that like to me it seemed like yeah you know he he was on the fence like should I go shouldn't I go uh, do you believe and he got all that stuff then he sees the picture of him and his dad and I again. I don't want to. We're not. This is going to be about me and my dad, per se. All right, I love you, dad. But um, you know, maybe it, it just speaks to me seeing him like turning away in that look in that that old picture where it's a young Indy and Tori, a young um, Sean Connery. If you just wanted to see what a young Sean Connery looked like, <laughs> sexy Sean Connery. Uh, was there ever a sexy Sean Connery? <laughs> oh yes. no. Yes, the first Bond, Dr. No. Holy shit, he comes out of the water. I was like, oh, for Clint. I, th- I think we need to have a poll on the Mythwits page to, to see the women and female reactions on that one. I will. We should do that. Sean Connery hot or not? How do you think? Or hot, hot Bond? <laughs> Who's your hot Bond? It's got, be young. it's got to be young Sean Connery. Was young Sean Connery hot? Yeah, well, not? you'll post the pictures. Yeah, the, 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 who, who was the hotter Bond? Sean Connery or Roger Moore? or Oh, definitely Sean Connery. Roger Moore was a puffer. Yeah, but there's <laughs> anyway. a, lot of, a lot of women know that think that older Sean Connery is more hot. Just saying. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Well, older Sean Connery is pretty damn hot. Well, I mean, yes. old and then older, I guess. He's sexy. Hey, hey. <laughs> is he a sexy single? Tread, tread lightly, Tori. Tread lightly. He's on, he's on Tinder for elder. Oh, wow. Well. Mm. Well, that was a moving that was on. a conversation killer. <laughs> <laughs> moving, moving on. <laughs> what is uh, this grinder? <laughs> all right, so uh, wait, 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 what what are we going to talk about? For Act Act Two is pretty much when we we get to Venice. Um, we we get the the, uh, the the library again. I thought there was a little bit more, um, a little better. You know, yes, the you know he's cracking the thing, and the kid, the guys like kicking, hitting the book. I mean, uh, it wasn't as bad. Like, I, I, honestly, when, 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 when his when his father felt when he fell down the steps with his dad, all, that was like too tomfoolery for me. But yeah, um, yeah. So. I was like, is that Albert Einstein? <laughs> hey, wait a minute! Breaking, I got a break. Sorry, Mama Mar says Sean Connery is still hot. There you go. Told there you. it mm-hmm. is. And Mama Marsh mom, would know. Yeah, mom, beauty Wait, is both? in the eye of the beholder, and uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes that beholder has cataracts in their eyes. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, Mama! I'm gonna, I'll hold them down. You kick them. <laughs> I love you, Mom. I'm going, I'm going to visit my mom in a month. <laughs> Jesus, I'm gonna get my ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we found the the thing. Oh, can we talk about the rats for a minute? So, so yeah. this this is what I thought I wanted to have, take a time to minute. So, in in all the in, Indiana Jones movies, there was there were the snakes, there was the spiders, and we've had the rats. Well, insects, just all yeah. kinds. Yeah. Of oh yeah, there was yeah there was oh. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think, Pete? What 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 have, uh, what is the oh. Is there a worst of those three evils? I mean, like you got to think. Fuck no, dude. The insects ones was the horrible. But but the rats, like the rats are, are no. gonna like one nips you nope. and that's blood and there are all these hungry rats down there. You know what I'm saying? Like that is good. not. I'd rather good. be eaten by rats. I would rather. Yeah, but you notice what the rats? By rats. The rats were actually trying to get away from the water. They really didn't care about the people, especially yeah. once the fire came in. So they weren't really. She, she, had like, a she did have that one on her. Ugh. Do you remember the centipede that yes. comes up and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they don't eat much. Uh, <laughs> no, for me would be the worst. Which one? Nope. Snakes, no problem. The oh. snakes, uh, uh, nope. Mm-mm. Yeah, Asp. very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, what about for you? What is your what is your least or best of whatever that evil? F F those rats. Yeah, hardcore. Oh, rats, I mean, but but slimy, I had pet rats. Slimy, wet rats biting you? No, no. You know what it is? I had I had pet rats, and they don't ig me. They don't ug me out. Like I'm like, eh, rats. Like a thousands had of pet them. Snakes. Yeah. Oh, it's not. It's not. Said Two thousand they had to raise for this. Yeah. Wow. Although, man, you get them things cooking up, man. That's a good meal. You know. I wonder how many of them died in the making of that movie. I don't think no, no rats none, were harmed in the making of this. Where, where's Peter? Right. <laughs> Peter, 
Peter. Hey. Mm. Peter's on this show right now. That's right. He he says no, none were hurt. Sean Connery loves Peter. <laughs> That's why I'm going grinder. <laughs> I'm going to swipe left. <laughs> swipe, swipe. I my account says I'm in Italy. <laughs> Yeah, see, you all know. Why? There's something wrong with X, you guys. You got that X, joke. X marks your spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's his catchphrase. I'm controlling him down here. Oh, oh, right. So there was a a, a, a faux pas. Uh, they they totally screwed up uh, in in at this in this scene when they're going down there, and he said there's tons of petroleum. Like it's literally cover there's a layer of petroleum right i mean the last time i checked oil floats on water right and he's got the the um the torch and he's it like fire is dripping off the torch into this hold on it's not faux pas oh, the oh faux i'm pas sorry was science dropped... science no, no i no no this isn't just science this is this is a uh this is a, a mechanic -y thing too um gasoline uh, you can take a match. You can take a lit match and throw it in gasoline, and it can go out. Like it doesn't necessarily catch fire. Right. Um, and unrefined petroleum is even harder to light. So when he lit the torch up, I was kind of like, "Yeah, that's kind of plausible, but very dangerous because it it could it could light up. It it could like especially if you drop the torch. Um, and even those little drips that came off, maybe they wouldn't have caught." But when that guy dropped the match down in the hole, I was like, yeah, no, 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 not if he's running around with a torch. It wouldn't be that, you know, if it's that, it's either that flammable or it's not that flammable. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of like, yeah, that was kind of a faux pas. I, I didn't really care for that a whole lot. But whatever. It's Indiana Jones. I, you know. Yeah, mm. well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it definitely gets a curve. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, buh, buh, what else? What else? What do we got? What do we got, guys? Um. We, uh, I've got nothing else there. until we get a little bit later. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to sort of just run us through it. So we we get the thing. Then then he gets back to um, – oh, they have the chase scene through Venice in, on the boat. Mm -hmm. And that's when he yeah. meets the uh, one of the uh, – uh, I don't – forgot what the crusade guys. Crusade guys. Yeah, the crusade guys. With the, oh, look at me. I have a – like a oh, thing on my chest. Head. Yeah. yeah, you'd see them later in The Mummy. With... No, right. no, I'm kidding. But, <laughs> <laughs> the Brotherhood of the Nod, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and um, let's see. Uh, oh, because, again, this is sort of like you're a good guy. You're like, dude, I'm not even looking. Dude, dude do you even, um, you know, do you even go for the Holy Grail? No, I'm here for my dad, okay? Oh, well, in that case, we know where your dad is. You know, yeah. he's on the border. Yeah. Like, uh, sure. Go to Austria. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, okay. uh, Wait, right, David, so David Benavides wants me to say, shit down, shit down right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <God. laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I, I, so, I, all right, well, anyone jump in any time, but uh, so I wear, I mean, he's worth the castle. Oh, he does the, the little sh the slapstick of where he's the, uh, he's the uh, Scotsman looking at the tapestries. Um, oh, yeah, that was terrible. Tapestries. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, knocks him out, but then they're they're caught, and uh, but he finds his dad. But then uh, we find out that uh, this was like I'm, I still am having trouble reconciling this, and I don't know Pete uh, and um, and Scott when when like he finds out that they both slept with uh, with yeah. their uh, yeah, I'm like Nelson? as an old man, I don't know. I'm like I'm having trouble thinking about. Hey this. man, don't don't start with the freaking ageism. All right, don't start with ageism. <laughs> It has nothing to do with ageism. It has everything to do with that was your dad and your son banging oh, the same girl. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, that is a little. Yeah, that's that's a little bit much. Like, that's yeah, disgusting. no. All but it's say, not disgusting that she slept with Sean Connery. It's disgusting that she slept with both of them. I got you. All I gotta say is, in her favor, at least they didn't high five. Yeah, right. They went there. <laughs> What what is that called? They did they didn't do an Eiffel Tower, right? But I do I do love Sean Connery's like 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 Harrison Ford is kind of like oh he's like you know Andy's like oh right and Sean Connery's like oh well whatever Sean it's like and yeah. then it's so like it's so realistic like the older guy's gonna be like 
I don't give a shit. I got mine. Right? Yeah, but he, <laughs> because he, he was first. He was yeah, first. He first. That's the what thing. he did get he it first. Yeah. Exactly. He didn't exactly. waste oh. floppy seconds. So are you saying that? Yes, yes, he did. <laughs> yes, that's yes, why Indy was pissed <laughs> because he was like, "Oh, wait, what?" Yeah, yeah. How do I taste, son? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! No. Oh. Oh. Take it away, Take it away. Well, I, I, I loved it. I loved it when they when they actually introduced it. So, Dad, oh. how did you how did you know she was a Nazi? Well, she talks in her sleep. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's He's like, like, uh, what? 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 Now, oh, no. Dude, hold on, wait. Oh, 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 Mama Marsh. Mama Marsh has got a zinger in. Oh, she no. Said, Here it goes. Bonding. <laughs> bonding. Some father son bonding time. Yep, there you go. No, but bond. Get it, James? Oh. Bond. Bonding. It's oh, a, oh. Th- very crafty, Ariel. Uh, very nice. crafty. Good, good going, Mom. So, yeah, that was one one of my favorite lines though from the whole movie, uh, my second favorite line, other than "You chose poorly," is um, when when his father they're they're on the blimp at this point, and his father says, oh, "Son, I'm as human as the next man," and he goes, "Yeah, but Dad, I was the next man." <laughs> yeah, that Dude, was my, my favorite. favorite. One of my favorite lines from that movie is it happens at that same table, the conversation they're having. He says just when you were starting to become interesting, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and like when Andy leaves, he's yeah. like, he's like, oh, I left. And he's like, yeah, Josh, when you started to become interesting, it's like, damn, that's a sick burn right there. <laughs> well, yeah. No, and it, it's, go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. No, no, it's, it's, it's actually funny because my favorite quote from the entire franchise happens in that same time, right after Indy said, Marcus has it. And he, you You'll never find him. In fact, he's probably already got the grail. And they cut over Marcus, and he says, quote, water? No, thank you, sir. No, fish make love in it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh is that what he said? Yes. Oh, that's wow. a good You know what? So my – that maybe that's where – so, you know, my, my lovely, my Jenny, her, her brother always says that. He goes, oh, I don't drink water. Fish fuck in it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so so Will Will brings up. He says his favorite line is is the no ticket, right? And and I want to. I have I have a note on my page that says no ticket right here because when I, I'm watching it again, I was like, oh crap, right? This is the movie that that was in. I for some reason I had put that in the first Indiana Jones movie, like in my head somehow. You know that he had done that on the in the first movie, and I was like, oh yeah, that's right, it was this one. But that is carried with me the no ticket. I've actually used that in role playing a couple times, in like a role when we're, we're gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, throwing somebody off a train once, I was like, no ticket. <laughs> right? Not that, not that I was trying to get away with anything. I just said it as the guy was throwing him off the train. All but right, it's, it's from that. It's you know, I. I Oh, so here, 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 guys, I'm going to have to uh, do a time check here. So we have about 10 minutes left. Mm-hmm. So um, if anyone has any last minute notes that they had or they wanted to talk about uh, for the second act, we need to jump. Um, I mean, we need to really rush through if there's anything mentionable about the, uh, the the tank act. But I mean, you know, the tank scene. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much I don't know what's, what's mentionable, but then we, we can, you know. Um, I got one thing. So. One okay. quick thing. It, it's real quick. It's real quick. When his dad was on those treads and he had, you know, he had, he had got a hold of him and, and his dad's yeah. going da, 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 in real life, that would have torn his back clean off. That's all. Yeah. Yep. I yeah. said that they, they let that one slide. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was that was that what you were going to say That's too, it. Scott? Oh, no. I, I, I was, I was going to ask a question that if we've only got 10 minutes left in Mythwit's time, is that actually like 30, 35 minutes? Uh, we we really honestly we honestly try and keep it like to an hour dude like an hour 10 tops yeah uh-huh. i have this idea pete we should learn how to speed video up so that you know they're watching it just in like 1.1 time and we can condense a little more in and we sound a little bit faster because people are listening faster and it sounds like we're saying things faster and we're smarter but you then can do it just, you can do it in premiere It'll just be me going, Duh, um, 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 instead of, um, <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> now, I got to, I, I, I was really about reconciling uh, senior and junior's relationship is, is 90% of what the rest of the movie was about, because it's all about those situations that they yeah. get into, and they're proving to each other their worth that they never saw in each other before. 
Totally agree. Yeah. I'm going to touch on this. I did have a note on this. Um, there was a uh, the turning point for each one. Okay, the turning point for Indy was on the beach when his father did the did the thing with the umbrella and scared the birds and and you know took down the um, what is that? What do they call the flyfin, stoffin, floffin, floofin, flutity, floffy, floffin? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, floffin. Yeah, them, him. Um, and uh, when he did it with his umbrella, so uh, the look on his face, they, it was a long, long cut in on the face, and you could see it was like, wow, dude, like, <laughs> and then when his father was, when Indy had saved him, they, you know, they managed to foil the entire tank, you know, destroy the tank and everything, but he, his father thought he went overboard with it, and then he's all, there's so much to say, so much to say, um, and then he realized, you know, when he wasn't, um, dead is the whole you know I just love the fact that Indy's looking over the edge like what are we yeah. looking at what do you got and I, and I like how his hat just magically reappears of course it does yeah. That, that that you know what that hat is enchanted. I don't so, it fuck whatever the 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 Grail can do for you. Like that hat is enchanted. Any anyone who can ride a motorcycle at forty miles an hour and keep a fucking uh, yeah. uh, a hat on, like that on, yeah. with fedora on, it's magic. I mean, yeah. like glue. It's a hat of returning. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we move on to the third act where we basically get into the temple and uh, we they're sneaking up and seeing that they got there first still. Um, uh, and the um, the heads roll and then they get caught. Duh. And then um, so Indy has to go and start doing the thing because his father gets shot. So, uh, I mean, I really sped through that, obviously, but uh, what do you guys, is there anything to say before we go on to the, the three... Feats I got a quick one. Yep, go ahead. When, when they get captured, the guy shows up and he's holding the gun and he's got his pinky sticking out, right? And I'm like, that is not a trained soldier. That is an actor who doesn't know how to hold a damn gun. And I just, it just, it, it was like, it was almost like that pinky was sticking me in the eye when I saw that. I was just like, yeah. no one who knows how to shoot a gun would hold their fucking pinky out. What is it, tea time? You know? <laughs> you won't know. You hold your pinky out when you're shooting um, a gun. That's really all I had about, had about Uncivilized. that. Uncivilized. I was kind of glad she fell in the crevice. Yeah? Yeah. Well, she has to. She's a bad guy. Well, and, right. you know, that would just make the paternity test a little bit harder, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. right. Just avoided a complete Springer oh. moment. Uh, yeah, Springer <laughs> moment. Yeah, right. <right. laughs> the lie detector said. Right. <laughs> Could you imagine all oh, the DNA testing that would be a bitch because it's like, hmm, well, that's very similar. <laughs> right, right. But no. both of them are sitting there and it's like, Dr. Jones Sr., you are not the baby's father. And then Junior's like, oh, God damn. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so uh, Tori just went like, Shemarsh. Tori went straight to the end where uh, we already got the grail, but uh, a few things happened in, in, in between there. So uh, tell us, Tori, what, what happened there? Uh, what were the three feats? Do you remember? Um, he had to, oh gosh, he kind of had to like duck and roll or whatever. The, the penitent oh, man. Only there a penitent go. man with this. Penitent man will pass. Penitent yeah, and then, oh penitent gosh, man will pass. If I had to hear, one? penitent man will pass one, one more time. <laughs> Sorry. I, I just know. needed it. <laughs> um, what know, was next? Was that the little walk, the leap? Of the name faith of thing? no, no the, name the name of God. The name of God. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I tried to pay attention, but ah, here's an inconsistency. He he falls because he jumps on the J, or yeah, right, it was a J, and uh, and the letters ahead of J that he grabbed onto were also not letters of God, so he should have fallen yeah! to his death. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, totally sure, yeah. that's a thing. Yeah, um, so yeah, but he, he finally gets past there, and then oh, the leap of you know faith. the leap of faith from yeah, the yeah. lion's mouth, which eh, whatever. Okay, I thought that one was kind of dumb. I mean, it was. It, I get what they were doing, but I thought it was like it wouldn't have been that invisible. I mean, come on, like yeah. it was literally. I think it just wasn't there. And then when they showed it, they were like, "Oh, we're gonna make it so you can think it was there." I, so, I don't know. I, uh, I, yeah. Okay, Pete, this is a good point for us because there's a point in this movie where. 
Um, it goes from very sciencey, very uh, hard hard science to kind of you know a the, there's a, a, a mythical aspect to this movie. So, how did you handle that? Well, being that I saw it when I was 19 and wasn't really that skeptical about things yet, I mean, I kind of was a little bit. Uh, it, it's it, I meant like just recently, okay? God. No, hold on. No, hear me out. It it endeared. It was endeared to me. Okay. So there are a lot of movies that I saw as as a younger person, which I love now. But if I saw them now for the first time, I would hate them. Like I, I'm look as much as I love Flash Gordon, I swear to God, if I saw that for the first time right now, I would probably hate it. I would probably think it was the dumbest fucking piece of shit ever. I really would. Uh, but I love it, you know, and, and same thing with this. I mean, like there, I may not have liked this movie as much. I mean, like if Crystal Skull, the movie that never really came out, the one they, they rumored about, if that had come out in say like 91, <laughs> right, I might have actually liked it. Right. Okay. Well, that's a good point. All right. Uh, Scott, I don't know. I mean, it, I don't know if you had any issues or all. I mean, I didn't really have issues per se for myself, but what about you? <clears throat> No, I think I, I think it actually tied right back to the beginning of the movie when he's mm. talking to the students and said, "We're here about truth, not fact." Mm. So, so it, it to, for me, it kind of came full circle in that in that one person's truth and one person's fact are not necessarily the same for everyone else. Mm -hmm. So and, it was and, kind of bridging the gap between the two. And and the fact it didn't really matter what anyone else would have thought or believed. I mean, if they experienced that. Whether it was, you know, I mean, however, you know, fictional it was, but that was their experience. Even if no one else ever believed them, they know it was true. So, right, right Mama Marsh? But you know what else is interesting about this one? What it, it followed with the first one. Um, if Indiana Jones had done nothing, the same thing still would have happened. <laughs> okay. It's just like the first movie. If Indiana Jones had not been born, right, the same exact thing things still would have happened the only difference is the ark wouldn't have been in a in a in a um a warehouse and in this one well nothing like if he didn't exist they would have gone in they would have drank out of the wrong fucking cup and um you know game, and over. Then, game yeah. over it just nothing would have changed except mm -hmm. maybe they they might not have drank from the right cup at all which means they all would have died and that poor oh. old knight would still be stuck in that room like, somebody please kill me. <laughs> Someone. <laughs> it's been 7,000 years. Well, right. well, that, that's a good question. What happens to him? Like, he still has to stay there. No, no one else was taken on the mantle. Oh, no, no, he's done. He, he's, he's done. Uh, oh. There's yes. nothing to keep him alive anymore. The immortality was broken yeah. when the cup came across the seal. So now he uh, is no longer immortal either. So he would die. Yep. So he gets to die. Man, that's a bummer, man. This is, that's bullshit, if you ask me. No, know. no, no. It's, that was justice. Or not justice. Well, that, was, justice. that was, that uh, was. what was that? That would be uh, mercy. That was merciful, because he wanted to go. He was ready. So, hey, man, he believed in God. He wanted to go to God. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have one thing uh, I want to bring up that we, that, we, that we glossed over with the Nazis, the, the whole Nazi timeline. Which Nazis. I thought was interesting. Killing us and he pulls out and he pulls out the book, right? He pulls out his dad's book when it's wrapped in the brown paper. And he's got other envelopes with it. And they're like bills or something, right? So it's like he got his mail and he's he's unwrapping the rubber band. And if you look at the bills, they had or the, the letters, they had clear plastic over top of the address or whatever. You know, like we get today, you get a bill in the mail today and it's got that clear plastic on it and it says, you know, the address underneath of it. And I was like, Oh, that's a mistake. Maybe. And if any of our big brains or nerds in the audience knows this, please hit me up and let me know. It's plausible. I don't know if it's accurate because I had to look up when plastic was in heavy use. And it actually was in 19, well, 1944. I didn't, I didn't realize it was 1938, but I looked up in the 1940s. Plastic was in heavy use in not only in industry, but in our home lives as well. I hadn't realized that plastic went back that far. Hmm. Um, uh, so it's possible that that was a real thing, but I don't know. I was like, oh no, they just took mail and they got, you know, they got modern mail and mixed in with it, you know, but I don't know. Wow, that's anyway. a very lovely story. Scott, um, did you have anything else you wanted to discuss? Because there were a couple of things we talked about pre-show. Um, I just want to make sure you, you were able to cover or you want to have a discussion about some of the other points about, no, just there were some of the, uh, the generalities of the movie. 
No, I think I yeah. think we okay. We got we got okay. All yeah. right, cool, cool. Wait a minute, I see something in the share docs. Is the Skatori moving ra- movie rating system? Mm. Oh, that's right. We did. Uh, we wanted to. We we don't do this, but we wanted you guys to teach us, and maybe Pete and I will try and come up off the cuff if you guys ever or did pick your your ratings. Teach us, and then we'll we'll try and um, input for ours. Scott, I'll let you explain the rating scales, but I did go ahead and write my numbers down. By the way. Oh, oh, cool, cool. Yeah, so so for movies, we rate them on three categories. One is the characters and character portrayals and interactions. The second is the overall story. How believable was it? And then the third one is the visuals, whether that's special effects, whether that's costumes, scenery, whatever. So those are the three categories. The rating scale is one through five. A three means that it's average across the board for everything you've seen. It doesn't mean it's bad, it's actually good, but it's just average. You'd see it once and be happy and pro- probably be good with that. A two is below average. You'd probably be kicking yourself for seeing it, but you're not gonna gouge your eyes out. A one is, it's horrible. It's one of the worst things you've ever seen. It's on, the other, on the other, <laughs> it goes right, <laughs> it's a good example. Uh, a, a four is above average. You'd, you'd see it probably a couple times and appreciate it better each time. And then a five is, it's within the top 10% of the best things you've ever seen. Okay. Hmm. So what we do is we, is we rate each of those three categories and average it to figure out what do we actually rate it as. All right. Cool. All right. So, uh, Tori, why don't we start with you? Sure. Um, for characters, I actually went with a four, even though I didn't know a whole lot of the people that did the acting and I didn't know a whole lot about the actual characters, like, you guys have the nostalgia. I don't. So for me, this is kind of one of those movies where it's like, if you go into it, I could say, eh, I don't, maybe not ever going to have to see this one again. But I actually give it a four because I like the characters. I like who they pick to play each character. And I thought the characters were kind of cool. I thought they actually had a purpose. Um, <clears throat> as far as story goes, <sighs> sorry, guys. I gave it a three. And I gave it a three because for me, and, and I think this goes to watching it for the first time at 34 and just some of my background, like when I was a kid, my first movie that I saw was Rambo at the theater. So, and the, it kind of continued that way. So for me, it felt like a glorified Hardy Boys movie. <laughs> so yeah, and and what sorry. <laughs> sorry so it's gonna get a three for a story and i also gonna give it a three for visuals it was just average for me it wasn't too over the top but it wasn't underdeveloped either all right cool hey you are entitled to your opinions scott it, it, I, it says i would give it a, an average so that's good. Yeah, and, and, and average is still good. Average yeah. means you see it and yeah. enjoy it, but you just may never watch it again. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. Uh, for me, I would give um, from characters. Um, I would give it a four as well. I, I would have given it a five, but it was a little too slapsticky in mm-hmm. parts between the characters, which yep. brings it down for me a little bit. So it's definitely not a five for me. It's 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 a borderline five. So I have to give it a four for that. Um, story standpoint, I think out of the entire franchise, it was probably the most solid story out of all of them. So I'd give it a solid five for story. And as far as, um, uh, visuals go visuals, I still don't see anything wrong with pretty much any of the visuals still, still holds up today. So I'd give that a five as well. Hmm. So I'd give it a 4.7. Cool. All right. Wow, Scott. I like it. All right. And Peter, let's go with you next. Okay. I'm going to say four for characters. Uh, I would I would give – so I'd give Raiders of the Lost Ark a five for characters. Every character in that was, was on point and was just a beautiful portrayal, well-casted, um, and very well-developed. I mean, even, even the secondary villains, even if they didn't say anything, they were just – they were so – really cool and iconic the guy with the sword that indy shoots right the the big muscly uh, guy he fights that's fighting the plane you just you you love all these characters even if they don't have any lines um but but the ones especially that you love are great this one fell short of that so i would say it was a four uh story i'm gonna say 
in the context of the the genre of the pulp genre and of the the store the um the indiana jones uh mythology i would say it was a four in believability um and and in composition i would give it a five except i felt like it kind of floundered a little bit like there were some places where it just kind of it, it kind of drug a little bit here and there not bad four still really good I'd watch it multiple times but um the story didn't blow me away uh, and then I would say a four for effects um, because the effects were really awesome for their time, mm -hmm. but they were not groundbreaking. It wasn't like when Star Wars came out or when, you know, and I, and I think five is something you save for, for those, the ones where the people are watching it are just like, I've never seen anything like this before. So I would say that was a four as well. So I'm um, fours across the board. I'd say that's not too bad. I'd say I'm pretty much on par with, Scott, although um, we have a one difference in the number. So I give it a four for the characters as well, and basically for all the reasons Scott did, I'm running low on time. I'm not going to get into it too much. Five, overall story as well. Um, I think it really did. Um, I, it, had they had done any other stories, I don't think it would have been nearly as well. Um, however, I'm going to diverge from Scott on the visuals uh, and kind of go with Pete on that one. Um, sort of for the way Pete said, uh, and, and again, four, like you said, four is still really good. Um, the all the scenes were pretty much on point, or the, you know, like the the, the stunts and, and everything. Um, there weren't there, you know, wasn't like uh, anything wrong per se. But you know, if if there was, um, it didn't it didn't earn the five, I guess, is like like Pete would say. So I guess that's about it. Um, we can give last moments, but I'm about to um, turn turn the um, start turning the lights down. Um, so, yeah, man. Uh, uh, Pete, why don't you go first before you have any last words? Because you know you will get the last last word, or will you? But anyway, uh, you know, I, I, it was a great movie, and 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 I'm, um, I'm glad we watched it again. I'm glad you suggested it again because I haven't seen it in a long time, and I was kind of like, oh yeah, okay, 1989, not a great year for movies, but uh, but so no, this you, you like those some better than Batman. Better, better yes. than Batman. Oh my God. Oh. I'm so glad we picked this one. I'm yeah. so no, I'm glad. All right. That's, that's my last word. All right. All right. And Scott, you say, what, what, what were some other movies that we were going to, uh, before, as you're wrapping up to, what were there, uh, one or two other movies that we were looking at? Bill and Ted's and what else? Uh, yeah. Bill and Ted. Um, I'm trying to remember what, what other movies were on that list now. It's been a while since we looked at that list. Yeah. Anyone? Tori, do you remember? It was Bill and Ted's. There was, uh, Oh God, I don't know a lot that I'd never even heard of before. Really? Yeah, yeah. You were you wanted you wanted Batman too, didn't you? I wanted Batman. I actually know something <laughs> yeah. about that movie. Yeah, I uh, I watched the uh, I watched the you, you gave the trailer for that, and it was like, yeah, I changed my mind. I changed my mind just watching the trailer. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. All I right, was Scott. Mad. Scott, Scott, we stepped on you a little bit. Any last last thoughts? No. For for me, I I love it. It reminds me of my dad. Uh, my dad and I used to watch movies like this all the time, and it, it was the realization that I, a little bit of me and my dad and a lot of my dad and me, and you don't typically figure that out until way later in life, much, much later than you should. <coughs> Tori. <clears throat> what? <laughs> Let me know when you're going to have me back for Batman. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Keep holding that breath. Keep holding that breath. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I actually it wasn't that bad of a movie, and I thought it was, it was fun trying something different than I would normally do. I'm more of a horror fan, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So this for me was a slowdown, but it was okay. We should do Evil Dead at some point. The original Evil Dead. Oh, yeah, that's good. I, I give that a full thumbs up. Yeah, let's do that. that yeah, we could fun. do that. Um, all right, so uh, Pete, I'm gonna try and do a thing. Do the I'm thing, gonna, man. I'm do gonna the try thing. and do this. Um, where is the this? Where is it? Interview. No intro, outro. Guess what? Oh God, where is it, Pete? Where's the ender? It's a closer. It's called the S6 closer. Yeah. Where is it? it's not there? Oh, there it's it in is. Your thing. Oh, I, it's there it's in the go. thing. Here we go. All yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Myths Go Tori Wits. Uh, if you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via our favorite podcatcher. 
um, or your favorite podcatcher. Uh, do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episodes on social media to help spread the Mythwits love all over the entire planet. Just just one one square mile would, would really make us feel good. Can you just give us one square mile? Um, tweet us at, at Mythwits.com and check our check out Mythwits.com. Um, check us, uh, tweet us at Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. Um, what else? Uh, Mythwits is produced by Aether Forge Creations and is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out P- TSRPN.com and AetherForge.com for more cool stuff. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it and don't have sex with it right before your son does. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. And tell your friends to tune in. And we'll see you next Monday. Uh, Peter? We named the dog Indiana. The dog? You are named after the dog? Can we go home, please? I have a lot of fond memories of that dog. And stay tuned for the Movie Draft Minute.